The narcissistic establishment is in full panic mode. This morning just to have your ears tickled you're going to be disappointed if you came here to have truth that will set you free then plow along with me Hebrews the 8th chapter folks how long has this truth been in the Bible since it's been penned it's been there all the time, but it's been neglected, it's been ignored. Eighth chapter, starting with verse six, please. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, speaking of Christ, by how much more also he's the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises, for if that first covenant had been faultless, there should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Folks, we are the house of Israel by faith. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. They shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for you shall know, all shall know me from the least to the greatest. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And in that he saith, the new covenant he made hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish. Hallelujah. I want you to <clears throat> follow me, please, very closely. This is the covenant that I have made with the house of Israel, the true seed of Abraham, those who walk by faith. 
In this covenant, God pledges the following. He swears he's going to write the law in our hearts and minds. He took an oath that we're, he's going to be God to us. We will always be his people. He promises that he will, we will know him and all his ways. We would be taught his ways by the Holy Spirit. And fourthly, he would make an everlasting contract to be merciful to our unrighteousness. He will forget all of our sins and forgive them and forget them. That's, th those are the pledges of the new covenant. Now, a covenant is made between two parties. But listen to me, please. Both of those parties have to be trustworthy, dependable, and able to keep the promises. They have to have the resources to keep these promises. Now, how can God make covenant with us? He made covenant with Christ. We, we, our, our word is worthless. We have no resources. We are not a good covenant partner. There's no way. We are in covenant only because we're in Christ. Because your word might not mean anything. It's worthless. Let me try to explain. The children of Israel promised, oh yes, we'll keep your commandments, so we will do it. The word was worthless. They broke it within days. And this is why God sent his son. He sent him to be mediator of this agreement because he was the only one worthy. He's the only one that had resources. We can't keep the commandments to obey God. We can't keep them in our human strength and our human ability. Our promises are absolutely worthless. If I had a house for sale, let me try to explain. If I had a house for sale, I would never make a contract with a penniless man. I don't care how much he said, I will do my best to pay you. I would say to this man, look, if you really want my house, let's say it's $100,000. Go get a cosigner. And, and I'll tell you, I'm not going to accept a cosigner that he brings. His, I found a cosigner. He's got a house that's worth $75,000. I said, I need $100,000. I'm not taking anything less. And you have to have a cosigner that has the resources to back this up so that when I sign this contract, I've got somebody co-signed who's got the word and the resources to see that I'm paid. Give me another example. Suppose you needed a million dollars or you go to jail. You've got to get a loan. You need money bad, so you go to a bank that you've heard is very lenient. And you go to the loan arranger and you say, sir, you sit and say, do you give million dollar loans? He said, oh yes, sure do. Good, I need a million dollar now. I'm quick, I need help. I need a million dollars. So he's fine, he pulls out an application form. And he says, all right, let's start listing your assets. How, how much money do you have in the bank? Uh, how many homes do you own? Uh, and what are your liabilities and how do you expect to pay this back? And you say, well, 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 I'll tell you what, truthfully, I don't have any assets. <laughs> truthfully, I'm unemployed. <laughs> but I tell you, I'm a man of my word. You ask my wife, I'm a man of my word. <laughs> and I, 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 and he, he sees the funny, I, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll work it out. I, I'll scrub floors, I'll do all the bank windows. I'll work my fingers to the bone. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll make sure I don't get in trouble. I won't smoke, I won't drink, I won't commit adultery, I won't watch pornography so no cop can come get me in jail so you can't get your money. I'll work, work, work until it's paid. What chance do you think you're going to get that money? As much chance as you've got of keeping your word to God that you'll be holy. You need a cosigner. You need a rich cosigner. Because your debt is beyond your comprehension. You know what the purpose of the old covenant was? Simply to show you how bankrupt you are. The old covenant is, God will let you stay under the law until you quit going around and trying to work angles and say, I'm going to work for this, I'm going to do it. And you make promises, you do everything until you finally run out of banks. You finally run out of effort. 
You finally sweat yourself till there's no more sweat. You've made promise after promise and every promise you've made has failed and that's the purpose of the new covenant. It has accomplished its intended purpose when you finally sit back and say, I'm dead. I, I can't do it. I'm, I'm empty. I'm dry. My word is no good. I sin, confess. I've made God a million promises and broke every one of them. I need a sponsor. Yes. I need a co-signer. I need a surety. Let me show you the heart of the new covenant if I can. God made an incredible agreement with his son. See, the covenant was made with Christ. And then to us only as we are in him. I hope this is language you're not going to understand. God made a covenant with his own son Christ because he saw that we were totally incapable of dealing with the dominion of sin. And if God didn't move, he would have lost all of creation. He would have lost mankind. He made an agreement. He foresaw this. He knew it. And he would send his own son. <clears throat> and he came when man was without strength. This was the purpose of the old covenant. To bring to man to a place where he acknowledged he's without strength. And the Bible said when we were without strength, Christ died. That's when the new covenant was initiated. Was ratified at the cross. Was initiated at the birth of Jesus Christ. God made an agreement. He said, I will endure you with my spirit. And I'm going to give you my spirit without measure. Now Jesus, secondly, was to come as a pattern man of the secret of the new covenant and the power so that man could see in Christ that the covenant has the power. Jesus did not live a sinless life on the power of humanity. He lived a sinless life on the power of the Holy Spirit that was given to him without measure. It was the Spirit of God that was in him. The prophet Jeremiah and Ezekiel both said the same thing, and I'll show it to you in just a minute. It's very, very clear in the scripture. It, Jesus Christ was the pattern man so that all of us would realize that we have no chance. We have to come into the covenant. We have to believe that the Holy Spirit given by God is the secret of our power. The Bible, in this race with Christ, God made with Christ that Jesus would gather all of those who would be in the covenant and the Father would give Christ, listen to this now, the Father is going to give Jesus access to all of his wealth. Now, I want to show you something that is so mind-boggling. When I saw it, I, it just overwhelmed me. It, it, I still don't comprehend it. It is so incredible what God has done. And if you'll see this, you'll see how far God has gone to keep you. You'll see to what extent God loves you and how he intends to keep you by his power from the clutches of the devil. And if you can see this now, I'm getting now to the heart of the covenant. Listen, you had to have a sponsor. You had to have an assurance. The Bible calls it a surety. So much more Jesus has become the surety or the guarantee or the sponsor, the co-signer of a better covenant. That's Hebrews 7.22. Jesus has become the surety, the co-signer. You know how that happened? Jesus looked at you and I in our poverty. We had nothing to pay. First of all, Jesus would pay all our past debts and past sins. But what about our future sins? We're going to need a co-sponsor because the bill's going to come due for all our present sins and future sins. Who's going to pay them? How, how, how? You say, well, the blood does it. Yes, but there has to be power because I want to live in joy. I want to live in victory. I don't want to live all my lifetime in fear. I don't want to live in guilt and condemnation. God sees we need a rich sponsor, a rich co-signer. So what did God do? He gave him all his wealth. He made him incomprehensible wealthy. He made him wealthy in wisdom and grace and power, everything that man would ever need to live an overcoming life. He filled him with his Holy Spirit without measure. He made our co-signer rich so that he could be our co-signer. Think about it. God so loved you, you didn't, you didn't make an oath to God. You didn't go and get your own co-signer. God went out and got your co-signer for you. And he had to be rich. 
He had to be able to pay any debt that you couldn't pay because when you don't pay, the cosigner is responsible to pay. So he got you your own cosigner. So that when you ran out and everything was due and the Heavenly Father and His justice have every right to call you in on the debt, the cosigner is notified and the cosigner says, I'll pay it. It's even more incomprehensible than that. My cosigner has left this earth. He went with all his wealth back to the Father. He ascended to heaven. He's in glory now. And here I am and still my weakness and poverty. Oh, but there was another agreement made. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I'm going to send an attorney. Can you imagine a live-in attorney, full-time live-in attorney? The Lord said, the same Holy Ghost that raised me from the dead, the same Holy Spirit that kept me in sinless perfection, I am going to send him to you and he's going to abide in you. And you know what he's going to do? Oh, oh, f folks, you don't believe that? I want you to listen. Please go with me to Isaiah 59, please. Isaiah 59, and let's nail it down. This, this is so incredible if you just ask, oh, Holy Ghost, make me see this. God, let me understand what you, how, how much you love me and what you've done in the new covenant. Look at verse 20 and 21, Isaiah 59. And the Redeemer, that's Christ, shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression. And Jacob saith the Lord, as for me, this is the Father speaking, as for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit which is upon thee, in other words, the same spirit that's on my son Jesus, my words which I have put in thy mouth, he's speaking to Christ, the very spirit I put on you, the words I've given to you, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. The same spirit! You know what Jesus said? This attorney would do when he came to abide in you he will guide you into all truth he will speak whatever Christ tells him to speak in other words secondly he will show you things to come I used to think that was prophecy no he will show you things to come that were promised that we can't even comprehend things that are in the covenant he will show you things to come keeping power wisdom my glory of God Forgive me for getting so excited. <laughs> Bible, Jesus said he will glorify me. And how does he do that? By showing us what's available to us in Christ. He shall receive of mine. He's going to show it to you. John 16, 14. He will deliver to us all that the Father has given to him. He said all things that the Father has made, given me. He said God made me rich on your account. He's going to take what he's given to me. He's going to show it or give it to you. The Holy Ghost distributes the gifts and the glory and the power of Jesus Christ, for in Him is the victory. Do you know what it means when the New Covenant says, God said, I'm going to write my laws in your heart? He puts the lawgiver there. It was the Holy Ghost, the finger of the Holy Ghost, who wrote the law. It was the Holy Ghost who inspired. He was there all the time. It's the Holy Ghost that comes. I, I used to struggle with this. What, what does it mean, the law written on my heart and, and, and all that? It's the Holy Ghost abiding, who is the lawgiver. He is there. He knows the mind of God. He knows the mind of Christ and all the things of Christ that he abides. And all of this is fulfilled in that he comes and distributes so that when I need power, when I need strength, I go to the Lord in prayer and I say, Lord, I... I'm about to fail. I need help. Holy Ghost.
come now. The Holy Ghost distributes all the power and the wisdom and the glory that is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said it'll be there. If you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. <sighs> Can you understand this? The glory, absolute glory of God saying, I'm not, I am so determined to keep you from falling. I'm so determined to deliver you. I'm going to make an incredible offer. I'm going to make an oath to you that even if you should fail, I'm providing your co-signer. I've made him rich in your behalf. And all that you need is there. And the only reason we don't live in victory today, we can't believe it. We can't lay hold of it. We, won't, we can't conceive that God could so love us that he would make such incredible provision. Folks, it's all by faith. It's all seeing it and stepping out on faith and believing with everything that is in you. Hallelujah. This covenant was meant to build up our faith so that we could overcome all the powers of hell. I, I hear people say, well, praise God, get me into the covenant right now. If this is all true, I want in it. Folks, listen to me. This covenant is only for sin-sick souls. It is only for those who so loathe their sins. It's been those who have struggled so long, and God has seen that struggle, and God says, I'm going to make a way for you now. I am going to come to you in your struggle. It's like you came to Egypt when they were sighing and crying and sent a deliverer. He has sent us a deliverer. Hallelujah. Our deliverer is in glory, but he sent his attorney who abides and lives forever in our hearts to distribute and, and to, to bring to Christ the mediator. Oh, hallelujah. It's only for those sin-sick souls who are looking for a way to obey God. They have a hunger and thirst for righteousness. This covenant is only an enabler for those who say, I want to obey God. I want to walk in righteousness. I want to walk in holiness and I don't have no how. I've been reaching for the power for years. I've been struggling to find that power. I want to walk a sinless life before God. I want to walk holy and righteous before God. And God says, you'll do it by covenant. The covenant is only for sin-sick souls. Why would God want to put a new heart in a man who doesn't want it? Why would God write his laws in somebody's heart not willing to obey them? This is for those who want to obey God and have been hungering and thirsting and crying. Folks, that's been my cry all my life. Only to please him and to walk in his righteousness. And if that's your cry, God's going to hear that sighing and crying. And he's going to come remember his covenant and deliver you. He said, I'll be merciful to your sins. But why would he be merciful to those who have no intention of departing from their sins? He said, and with this I'm going to close today. Pastor Dave. This is such an incredible thought, a truth. It's a secret to living an overcoming life, then why has it been hidden all these years? Why, isn't, why aren't people, why aren't ministers preaching it? Why is it hidden? Folks, I started seeking the covenant when I was 28 years old. And the theme of my, my whole ministry has been from Psalm 25, the secret of the Lord is unfear fear him, and the Lord will show him his covenant. And I, I, I said, Lord, why is it that after all these years it's taken me now over 40 years and it's been laying there. Folks, you understand that truth is there just as the children of Israel. Why, why was it that almost 350 years the covenant, the old covenant lay dead? The Abrahamic covenant lay dead and unclaimed when it was there with all of its power all the time. Same with the new covenant. The new covenant was understood by the Puritans. There's not a Puritan father, one of those God, or the, all those godly Puritan fathers. I could list names of them. I don't want to do it unless you fear I'm trying to impress you with my knowledge. I don't have much knowledge, but I, I do study the Puritans. And they had this covenant. This is 330 years ago. And this, the Scottish divines, they, they preached it. But what happened to the preaching of the new covenant over the years, it, it became 
uh, a vehicle for lawlessness. They, they took it, well, well, I've got attorney, he's going to pay this price so I can live as I please. And it led to antinomianism or lawlessness. And so God just let it die because it had been so abused. But folks, the Bible makes it clear. Isaiah 56, 4, now take hold of my covenant. In Isaiah 56, 5 and 6, I will give an everlasting name that they shall not be cut off. Everyone that taketh hold of my covenant. Everyone that taketh hold of my covenant. Look at me, please. This has been laying dead because of our own sinfulness in the last few centuries. We've become more and more of a wicked society all along. Every man doing his own thing. Folks, this covenant has been here all these years. But there comes a time when God says, you've forgotten it. But unless I remember the covenant, unless I act on the covenant, there is no hope. God is again in this last day. The, oh, this, this revelation came, this promise came now to Israel at the point of deliverance when God says the hour of deliverance has come. Folks, we're, this clo we're so close to the coming of the Lord. Listen to me, please. What I tell you now is prophetic, and I believe with all my heart. I believe that God is going to open the new covenant. This is going to be the one message of the last days that sets men free from the power of sin. Because the power of sin is going to get so incredibly powerful. There's going to be wickedness beyond anything we know even today. And God has to bring forth truth. Only truth can stand against this onslaught of the devil. Folks, if I stand and just berate sin, if I try to just get you down here to cry and weep for two hours because I have beaten you down with the message of conviction, you can get up and walk out and last for three weeks. But if you get this truth in your heart, that God has made me a promise. Not mine to him, but his to me. God has made me a promise. And I'm going to stand before the devil and all, the, all of the demons of hell and say, I stand here now. Though my house be not what it should be, God has made me an everlasting covenant. That's sure. This is the one thing the devil doesn't want you to know. You're going to hear more and more of it. Not just from this pulpit. But I believe God's going to speak to godly men all over this earth. In this last day. And he's going to bring forth the word. Hallelujah. God has remembered his covenant. He's never forgotten it. He's going to move now. Hallelujah. Do you understand? Are you beginning to understand now how much God loves you? Do you understand now that all that God wants out of you and me is, is to loathe our sin? To have a hunger and thirst for righteousness and to say I want to walk pleasing before God and in that struggle he'll come down with his truth and his power and thank God for the Holy Ghost thank God for the Holy Ghost that's why I don't understand who people people just want the Holy Ghost to tickle them they just want the Holy Ghost to knock them down I don't want the Holy Ghost to just knock me down and tickle me. I want the Holy Ghost to deliver and distribute to me all the power of Jesus Christ in my life. Hallelujah.